What is up, Fight Fans? Welcome to my podcast, also known as the MMA Anomaly Show. I'm your host, Olin Stewart, aka MMA Anomaly. And if you're new here, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and smash that bell for notifications. What is up, Fight Fans? Welcome back to another episode of the MMA Anomaly Show podcast. I'm your host, Olin Stewart, aka MMA Anomaly, and thank you for joining us for another episode today. Also, if you prefer to read all about it, make sure you check out the write-ups over on MMAanomaly.com. Now, jumping into the fight card that we've got coming up this Saturday, it is UFC on ABC3, also uh, being labeled as UFC Long Island or UFC Fight Night Long Island. I'm super excited for it. Definitely a lot of really great fights coming up. Um, I will list the betting odds here and uh, kind of go over who my picks are for these these fights coming up. Not all of them. I will say the first four I'm pretty much going to just breeze past. If you ask me when it comes to Jessica Penne versus Emily Ducote, uh, my old coach from AKA Dwight Grant going up against Dustin Soltzfus, and Dustin Jacoby versus Jung Da Un, as well as Bill Algeo versus Herbert Burns, AKA Lil Burns. Um, I think all of those fights are going to pretty much be pickums. They're the odds are very close, and personally, I went back and forth on these all morning, all night last night, and I really couldn't pick a winner. So, other than you know me showing bias for my my old coach Dwight Grant, I do think Dwight Grant is going to get it drawn into an exchange, but still end up winning that exchange via knockout, maybe first or second round. Those other three fights, it's a shot in the dark for me. Now, when it comes to the next fight, though, I am super pumped, super juiced, and I do have somebody that I think is going to win this fight. We got Ricky Simone going in against Jack Tank Shore. We have Jack Tank Shore at uh, minus 165, and we have Ricky Simone being the underdog at plus 140. I'm going with the favorite here. I'm going Jack Tank Shore. I am a true believer. The guy is 16 and 0. Every single fight, he seems to improve vastly his game uh, across. All, all facets of the board. His striking looks better every time. His grappling looks better every time. His footwork, his head movement, just everything about his game improves every single fight. So I'm all aboard on the Jack Shore hype train. In the next fight, it is truly the battle of the hard names to pronounce. We have Dalka Lungiambula going up against Punaheli Soriano. Um, in this one, I mean, if you look at their records, you've got 11 and four going up against eight and two. I mean, realistically, one guy has a little bit more experience, but if you look at Dalka's experience in the UFC, he's beat one guy that had zero wins in the UFC out of four UFC fights, and he beat another guy who got cut by the UFC and is currently fighting professionally with pillows. He's a professional pillow fighter. So I'm going to go with Punahaley Soriano here, um, and, and I really think that he ends up getting this by knockout probably in the first or second round. He is a favorite, though, so not a whole lot of money to be earned there especially at minus 225. Um, I would probably skip this one as far as the betting lines. Moving into the main card, we've got Lauren Murphy going in against Misha Tate. Misha Tate is the obvious favorite here at minus 205, going in against a plus 175 Lauren Murphy. Going to be completely honest with you all here. I'm taking the dog. I think Lauren Murphy gets it done, and I think she gets it done pretty fashionably. Um, would I take this by finish? Probably not. I think she dominates across three rounds and ends up taking home the decision win. Does it get her a title shot? No, which is kind of funny since I think if Misha Tate wins this fight, she probably gets a title shot just because it's fresh blood for the title contender picture. Um, but Lauren Murphy's already been there and failed, so I don't think they'll give her that shot so quickly. She'll have to probably win another two or three fights. That being said, plus 175, I would definitely put a little bit of money on Murphy. Um, don't break the bank on it, but I think she gets it done. This next fight, I'm not 100% certain who wins it. I did go back and forth with myself on my decision here this morning after I had kind of thought I had one nailed down last night. Um, but one thing I'm certain of is us fans are going to win whenever watching this fight. We've got Shane Hurricane Burgos, or sorry, Hurricane Shane Burgos going in against Charles Jordan. Um, you might remember Charles Jordan as the guy who did that crazy Spartan kick. Um, I, I might I might be wrong here, so don't quote me on this, but I think that might have been like the last ABC card. Um, either way, you know we're going to see some excitement on ABC with these two guys going at it. I personally think at minus 165, Shane Burgos is the favorite for a reason. Uh, Charles Jordan at, at plus 140, it, this is kind of a pick for me, I'll be completely honest, but I think Hurricane Shane goes in and gets it done. I do feel like he is uh, slightly more experienced, even though they have the same amount of fights. Um, actually, 
yeah, I think, yeah, they have the same exact amount of fights. So uh, Charles Jordan actually has one more fight technically. It just ended in a draw. But I, I think Shane gets it done. I think he's more educated in his striking approach. And I think that utilizing the footwork is going to be the real key going in against somebody like Charles Jordan. That being said, don't blink because this one could go either way, ladies and gentlemen. In this next fight, you know I'm rooting for my boy Matt Schnell. He's going in against Sue Matiergi. Um, I, I hope I didn't mispronounce that guy's name. But either way, you know he's losing to the homie Matt Danger Snell. Let's go, baby. Got the rated rookie card. Got the Don Roos card. We're ready. We're ready for that Matt Danger time. Let's go. Um, I'm a super, super big Matthew Schnell fan, have been since the MTV Caged days, and I, I think he goes in there and gets it done. I think this is his bounce back fight, and I, I think he's a top 15 flyweight for a reason. I think after this win, maybe he goes on a valiant run and uh, makes it top 10, top 5 after this. Either way, I'm looking forward to the journey, and I always love a good Matt Schnell fight. Also, at plus 230, it's really hard not to bet on the homie, right? Um, Matt Schnell is definitely... He has better boxing, in my opinion. Um, his opponent hasn't really had any super incredible wins. Uh, he also lost to Luis Smolka in 2018. I believe Matt Schnell ended up having a win over him around that same time span. So I know MMA math doesn't technically work or typically work, but we're rooting for Matt Schnell. Louisiana strong, baby. Let's go. In the next fight, we've got a plus 140 Lee the Leech Jing Liang going up against Muslim, the king of Kung Fu, Sakilov. I, I think the favorite wins this at minus 165. Uh, the king of Kung Fu gets it done. I think uh, he's better on the feet. He really has better scrambles. His takedowns are better. He's just a more well-rounded fighter. And I also feel like he fights less emotionally than Lee Jing Liang does typically. Um, that being said, I, I don't think there's been a ton of trash talk, so Lee shouldn't come into this super, you know, upset or, or aggressive. But typically his fight style is pretty aggressive as is, and I think that that plays into the advantage of the King of Kung Fu, Sakilov, um, or Salikov. My gosh, these names, these names. <laughs> um, I think Salikov does end up getting it done. I, I think he probably ends up getting it done via knockout in the second or third round. This next fight has the best betting odds on the entire card. And what I mean by best betting odds is the most incorrect betting odds. We've got Amanda Lemos. You might know her from the Netflix movie Bruised. Um, she's at minus 330. And then we've got her going in against uh, fan favorite, my favorite, Michelle Waterson, the karate hottie. Plus 275 for Michelle Waterson going in against somebody who realistically hasn't fought a ton of huge names or huge threats in the division and the first time she did she ended up losing she got her first loss in the ufc so i realistically think this is michelle waterson's fight to lose in her last fight she went up a weight class and lost to somebody who realistically could be a future champ and when you look at amanda lemos she lost to somebody who lost to the champion in her weight class so Michelle Watterson lost no relevance and no weight as a fighter by going up and facing a bigger, stronger, more game opponent at a different weight class where, quite frankly, she doesn't belong. Now, obviously, the elephant in the room is if we look at records, it would say Amanda Lemos has a much better trailing record and should, by all rights, win this fight. 11-2 and two going in against 18-9. and nine. I mean, Michelle Watterson has lost half as many times as she's won, which is horrible, but Look at who she's lost to. She's lost to Joanna Janchechik whenever she was at the top of her game. She lost to Carla Esparza, who's the current champion of the weight class. She went up a weight class and lost to somebody who arguably could be fighting for the belt by the end of the year or early on next year. So realistically, Michelle Watterson should go in there and dominate this fight. I don't see any reason why she doesn't. I think she can do whatever she wants with Amanda Lemos. She can take her down. She can beat her on the feet. She's the karate hottie for a reason, right? Her karate is absolutely incredible. She's got really great side kicks, um, kicks in general, and her boxing isn't bad either. She's got very crisp hands. So really looking forward to watching this women's strawweight fight, and I really do think Michelle Waterson is an absolute steal at plus 275 DraftKings odds. In the featherweight main event, we've got Brian T-City Ortega going in against Yair El Pantera Rodriguez. Now, I'm not a huge fan of either of these guys as far as personalities outside of the octagon, 
But darn it, when they're inside of that cage, I can't help but pay attention. Both are very exciting fighters, and both have very different skills that they bring to the octagon. If you would have asked me how this fight goes a couple of years ago, I probably would have said Brian Ortega ends up getting it done via finish. However, we've seen a lot of changes in Brian Ortega and Yair Rodriguez's games in the last few years. So... We have Brian Ortega, who used to be just strictly a submission specialist, in my opinion, who now has really good footwork. He actually moves his head off the center line a little bit when he strikes, which is fantastic. You never want to keep your head right on the center line, right? Um, any boxing coach will tell you that, which seems he's gotten back to his roots and, and gotten back with his old boxing coach, and it's really showing. So boxing has improved. He showed that in the Chan Sung Jung Korean zombie fight, and I think Yair Rodriguez has also improved. What has he improved? He hasn't improved his striking arsenal, but he's improved his ability to get hit and be willing to move into the fire, in my opinion. We used to see shades of willingness to quit in his old fights, whereas in the fight against Max Holloway, there was no quitting that dog. He was marching forward. He was yelling at Max Holloway, and Max Holloway is no slouch. He's the he's one of the best featherweights of all time. Um, so this fight could really go either way. That's why it's minus 175 going against plus 150. Um, pretty much a pick em Vegas odds, right? That being said, I am picking the underdog in this one. I think Yair Rodriguez, or as Chael Sonnen pronounces his name, Yair, goes out there and gets it done. Um, I think what ends up happening is Brian Ortega has shown a willingness to do standing guillotines and go for a takedown that he really shouldn't go for in previous fights, even in recent fights. And I think that if he does that, he's going to catch an up elbow or just a weird sneaky knee from Yair Rodriguez. Either way, I don't think it ends well for Brian Ortega. But that being said, if the fight gets past that third, fourth round, I do think that Brian Ortega can end up sneaking in there, getting a sneaky takedown or a sneaky guillotine or or even a triangle, T-City. Um, he might welcome Yair to T-City. Either way, again, with this one, I think this is going to be a fan favorite fight. I think us as fans are going to win, and I look forward to the card. Uh, as always, I appreciate the support. Thank you all, and please let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, smash that bell for notifications if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. And apologies for not putting out episodes last week. I finally ended up getting taken out by COVID, and boy, that thing is no joke. Um, I was definitely under the weather for about a whole week. I still feel like my voice sounds a little bit different, so on the mend, but feeling much, much better, and we'll take it. Uh, as always, Enjoy the hostilities, enjoy the skilled violence, and I look forward to watching the fights on Saturday and then talking about them soon after with you all.